good morning and welcome to Extension and Engagement Week 2020. I'm Marshall Stewart, Vice Chancellor of Extension and Engagement for the University of Missouri and Chief Engagement Officer for the University of Missouri System. And I'm glad you're here as we today bring together participants from not only EMU Extension, the University of Missouri in terms of the broader campus and collective here at the University of Missouri here in Columbia, but also our colleagues at UMKC, UMSL, uh, Missouri s and to join us with community partners, representatives of our statewide and local chambers and industry, businesses and other guests to really have a conversation around workforce development and what it means in the state. Today, I'm going to start out by introducing my co-host for the day, Megan Sylvie, who serves as our Director of Marketing and Communications for MU Extension. Megan? Thanks, Marshall. Good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, before we get started, I wanted to just take a, a minute or two and walk everyone through the online event environment that we're in today. Um, if you're seeing this now, you have at least found your first session, so congratulations on that. Um, the first tip that I would offer everyone is when you're in your session, and I'm going to click into this here. When you're in your first session, if you right click on this live stream link right here, you can open that in a new tab in your browser and that lets you have the live stream open and also the event environment open. And that's important because in each session, as you scroll down here, this is where you're going to find your opportunities to submit a question. Your live Q&A is here. You've got your session description, your link to your speakers. And then this is where you're going to find polls as well. Throughout the day today, we're going to ask everybody to participate in a live poll, and we'll be able to show the results to you in real time. <clears throat> the other thing I'll show just quickly is the left side navigation here is where you're going to find this Workforce Development tab. Includes some documents that will help you prepare for the Workforce Development conversations that we're going to have today. You've got sponsors here and speakers. Um, I will say thank you to Missouri Chamber of Commerce and Industry for sponsoring today's sessions. Um, you've got your activity feed over here. I'll click on that quickly and show this is where um, you can comment on the sessions and engage with colleagues, engage with other people in the events right here in the event feed and use the social wall. If you're on Twitter, go ahead and um, tweet using our hashtags Workforce Development and Engagement Week today. And those will be collected here on this wall for everybody to see. So that's, that's how we'll connect with each other today. I did just want to show quickly the results of yesterday's um, participation in the click game. These are the photos that everyone has shared yesterday participating in that challenge. That's still open today. Feel free to check that out. Um, share some photos and, and uh, comment on what your colleagues are up to as we move through the morning this morning. Thank you for joining us, and I'll turn it back over to Marshall. In the last year, during Engagement Week, we introduced a new concept, All Things Missouri, with a focus last year on broadband. We wanted to figure out how to leverage university resources, communities, and business to, businesses to improve and to make sure that people had not only access, but affordability in broadband. Since then, we've made a lot of progress. We've seen progress across the state in many ways. We've launched the Missouri Broadband Resource Rail, for the University of Missouri system, which has really brought together a, gr a great group of resources and things that people are now beginning to use at the community level to make change. We've hosted a workshop in Bollinger County, which has truly been remarkable and allowed us to bring together partners there to create really a test site, a pilot test of what can and should happen as we communities work together to create a blueprint for broadband access in their communities. Broadband is essential for moving the needle and ensuring that we meet the challenges that face Missouri, the grand challenges of education, health, and economy. You know, COVID-19 has made it even more apparent to us that we must deal with this in a very specific way, as we've seen not only universities, but K-12 and others have to deal with virtual education. Uh, we've also seen the, the health sector deal with it in terms of telehealth and businesses are beginning to communicate in different ways and new ways as we've seen many people have to work from home. So there's been a lot of change and COVID-19 has accelerated that and it's brought again the importance of broadband and the connection of what we do today. 
So we take broadband from last year and we begin to bring that forward because we're not leaving that topic, but rather adding to it as we think about workforce development. You know, when you think about workforce development, you know you've got to have reliable broadband access. You've got to make sure that you can do that so you are able to uh, support that 21st century network of people who work out across the state. But just as important as that is the ability and the need for people to have digital skills and literacy, access to education, opportunities, and digital savvy to contribute and succeed in a competitive, ever-changing, increasing technology-focused economy. You know, this last few months again has made that so apparent as we have seen this acceleration occur. Today, we're going to hear from leaders, thought leaders, thinkers, people that are really working in this area of workforce development and what we can do to move forward by having a series of working sessions as we close out this morning where we will get down into the weeds and really begin to say what are the actions we can take so that we understand the needs that exist at the community level and then bring the resources together, bring people together, convene people in ways that can really make this powerful and meaningful to those who are at that community level. Whatever your role is in the state, within Extension, within the university, or as a partner, we are here to work together to make sure that our state is positioned well to be a competitor in terms of workforce development. Our first guest today is someone that certainly will be no stranger. Uh, he serves as the governor of the state of Missouri, the Honorable Mike Parsons, and we're very glad to have Governor Parsons with us today. Hi, I'm Governor Mike Parsons. I want to welcome you to this year's University of Missouri Extension and Engagement Conference and share the great news about what's happening with Missouri workforce development. We started off this year excited for the future and the direction of Missouri. Up until this point in my administration, we have been fortunate to have a booming economy with record low unemployment and high wage growth. Because of this, we have been able to focus on skilling up our workforce and making necessary investments in infrastructure. Needless to say, when COVID-19 hit Missouri, everything changed. Now, more than ever, we see the need for Missourians to gain the skills, technical knowledge, and real-world experience they need to prepare for high-skill, high-demand jobs. We are confident that Missouri is on the road to recovery and that we will come back stronger than ever before. Already, we are beginning to see signs of economic recovery. In June, Accenture Federal Services announced plans to open an advanced technology center in St. Louis County later this year, which is expected to bring 1,400 new tech jobs. Lincoln County, broke ground on a new workforce development training campus that will create nearly 100 new jobs and $2.8 million in private investment. Tooling Tech Group, the second largest tooling provider in the United States, announced a $4.5 million investment to expand its Washington, Missouri operations. Tyler Pipe Company announced a $4.9 million investment and 75 new jobs in Marshfield. And Armstrong World Industries and AGCI recently announced a $8 million investment and nearly 130 new jobs also in Marshfield. And Chewy Incorporated announced plans to open a new 800,000 square foot e-commerce fulfillment center in Belton, which will bring over 1,200 new jobs to our state. These are just a few examples showing that even in the midst of COVID-19, Missouri remains a top location for businesses, investment, and expansion. Missouri is home to unique partnership known as the Animal Health Corridor. This industry-led coalition unites industry, academia, and government to advance innovation and build next generations of talent for the agriculture community. This concept can be replicated. Missouri has a large footprint in the healthcare, geospatial, manufacturing, and agriculture industries. 
We know jobs in these fields are essential to our state and to our country. We want to equip our next generation with the skills and training they need to fill high demand jobs in a post coronavirus business environment. We have to be able to move forward while still protecting public health and by working together we can and we will do both. We are already making progress and I strongly believe that Missouri will bounce back quickly and stronger than ever before. It is a honor and privilege to be the 57th governor of the state of Missouri. God bless and thank you. And we're very grateful to have, have had the governor with us today. Obviously lots of things going on, but really glad he could point out some of the big things happening in Missouri as it relates to not only economic development, but more importantly today, workforce development. You know, it's my pleasure now to introduce some of our partners in Extension Engagement Week. I'm very privileged to work with a set of engagement leaders across the system that work on the various campuses of the UM system. These people work every day with us, Allison and Ashley and I, and, and our office at the system level to ensure that we move forward in the right way to do the right things in terms of moving information and knowledge off our campuses into the communities of Missouri. You know, today I'm very honored to share with you who these people are, because oftentimes these are the people who work behind the scenes, and maybe you don't know them. But let's talk about who our engagement leaders are. First of all, we have Susan Reno. Susan Reno and Chad Higgins both work at the University of Missouri uh, in, in terms of Columbia, serving there with me every day and part of that team there, but do incredible work to think about how we move, again, that knowledge off this campus of the University of Missouri in Columbia. Next, we have um, with us uh, today, joining us uh, again by Zoom, Troy Lebo and also Nate Addington. Both of them work very closely as a part of the team to ensure that UMKC as well is able to move that knowledge from the campus into the communities of Missouri. We're also very glad that Andy Caranega and also Melanie Kearney is able to be with us today to, in terms of working with us again, moving that knowledge from Missouri S&T into those communities at the local level. And then finally, our colleagues and friends at uh, University of Missouri St. Louis, Patricia Zahn and Carl Gunter, great people as well, doing wonderful things to again ensure that that knowledge that's there at that university, being created at that university, <coughs> is able to be accessed and, and available to people across the state. Again, at the system level, you see the team. Allison and Ashley and Nathan, a new member of our team, we're working hard every day, not only to look at the programmatic side, but also to look at what we can do in terms of moving, again, that knowledge into the community and then having the resource base to do it and do it in a really good way. So with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn to two of these people now to really begin to give us some insights into their work. I'm very privileged to introduce to you Dr. Susan Reno, Assistant Vice Chancellor for Research Extension Engagement at MU, and also to present to you uh, Dr. Allison Copeland, who, uh, who serves with me as a Deputy Chief Engagement Officer at the University of Missouri System. Good morning. I'm Susan Reno, and it's my pleasure to talk with you this morning. Just a little over two and a half years ago, we formally convened the University of Missouri Engagement Council. We see how the Council's work has helped grow university connections and partnerships and change communities and lives across Missouri. Our Missouri College Advising Corps, for instance, now serves 48 partner schools throughout Missouri, helping high school students access and prepare for rewarding post-secondary and college and career opportunities. Those efforts have taken off system-wide. Just last week, we launched the Community Connect website featuring stories of community engagement, upcoming events, resources, services, and connects and contacts at all four University of Missouri system campuses to support and ignite community conversations. Fittingly, given today's focus on workforce development needs, the site features a new project called Maximizing Northwest Community Missouri Communities Through Development of the Entrepreneurial Ecosystem. The project brings the University of Missouri together with the Community Foundation of Northwest Missouri, other regional colleges and universities, regional planning commissions, and economic development agencies the Missouri Department of Economic Development, and the USDA. Extension Northwest Regional Director Joe Lear is on the planning team, guiding communities through the process. 
This is just one of among many examples of extension and engagement doing what it does best. Making sure the right people, organizations, and resources are at the table working together to solve Missouri's grand challenges around the economy, education, and health. That's why your presence today is so important. Partnerships forged here can advance important workforce development and college and career readiness strategies across the state. Together, we can strengthen our economy and prepare all Missourians to contribute and thrive. And now I'll turn it over to Allison Copeland, the UM System Deputy Chief Engagement Officer. Thank you, Susan. I appreciate that introduction. I wanna pick up on something Susan said related to Community Connect sites. Uh, we have a presence, a Community Connect site at each of the four system universities. And I'm gonna ask a friend, if they would, um, someone to go into the online event guide and in the feed section, type in community.umsystem.edu. And then you can all kind of take a look at that if you'd like to. So up until 2019, I worked for MU Extension in the 4-H Youth Development Program for 23 years. It was a great um, time, thoroughly enjoyable. The past two years, I have the privilege of working with the UM system as Marshall and Susan has said. And our office has really um, been put in place to support and serve the four UM system universities related to community engagement. So as we focus today on uh, workforce development and an important area in all of our communities. Marshall will talk a little bit later about how as a system we'll continue supporting those efforts that we're talking about today. So I look forward to that as well. In preparation for today, I wonder if you're like me and you've been maybe thinking about your own workforce development experiences. Um, maybe you have. My first job, for example, was uh, at age 15 and I worked in an old fashioned soda fountain in a drugstore. Now, soda fountains are from a bygone era. Uh, nobody really has them anymore. I think my formal title, you can Google this, was called Soda Jerk. That's what those positions were called uh, back then. But again, you know, fixing ice cream, serving people, et cetera. I had on the job training. I had mentoring, I guess, if you could call it that. Uh, I got to practice soft skills like working with the public, showing up on time, all of those sorts of things, customer interactions, and I got a lot of feedback. One of the feedback uh, pieces that I got was from my dad, who also worked in that drugstore, and he was really adept and good at uh, providing a lot of feedback. So those were great experiences. Clearly, like you, I've gone on to have lots of other job experiences, and I encourage you to think about your experiences and the positions you've held, and then workforce structures that have been in place to help get you there. Two and four year colleges, technical schools, apprenticeships, training, certifications. We all have had experience in workforce development. Now, there are many people on our uh, session today that are experts in that, but all of us have had experience in it. So I encourage you to think about that as a lens for today, in addition to thinking about the needs in your community. Uh, this is a great opportunity for us to come together as a system with our partners and stakeholders that are on today as well to learn about and support workforce development in Missouri through partnerships at the state and local level. In my two years at the UM system, we've learned a lot, um, continue to learn a lot, meet a lot of people, but one of the things I know for sure in these two years is that we have tremendous and supportive leaders, faculty, staff, and students and through the support of all of these folks, we can really leverage all of the university's research, teaching, community engagement initiatives to really better align and support local and state workforce development initiatives going forward. I know we can do that. So in moving in our morning events today, um, we'll continue to learn how to best support and amplify efforts in our state and with our local partners. And I know we'll continue to grow opportunities for Missouri's workforce and related to college and career readiness um, that ultimately strengthens our community and our economy. So I will turn it over to Marshall Stewart now. Thank you. Fortunate to get to work with both of you and the rest of the team because you make the, the work even more enjoyable. So thank you for your leadership. Uh, we could not do this without a great team. And the team that I shared with you earlier along with these two wonderful colleagues uh, make all this magic happen. So again, thank you so much. You know, another great partner in this work is the Missouri Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Uh, we'll introduce the people and the partnership in more detail in a few minutes, 
because they are sponsoring today's program, and I want to point that out. They stepped forward when I made the call and said, hey, Dan, love to have you as a partner, and they jumped right in. So again, really appreciative of their support as a sponsor for this morning's program and a collaborator with us in this work. We recognize the Chamber for bringing so many tangible benefits to every corner of our state and the state's economy. Through their advocacy for workforce development and workforce-ready communities, partnerships with STEM, post-secondary preparation, uh, in terms of college readiness and general support to business and manufacturing mentorships. You see, when you think about what they do and what we do, there's a lot of alignment and there's a lot of reasons for us to collaborate. We appreciate the annual recognition of our faculty and staff for programming that supports Missouri businesses, which they've been doing for a number of years. Let's take a look at this year's winner of the Missouri Chamber of Commerce and Industry Extension Business Award. The Missouri Chamber of Commerce and Industry Extension Business Award for 2020 is presented to Dr. Amy Patillo, Field Specialist in Labor and Workforce Development. Dr. Patillo's contributions to the Labor and Workforce Development team have distinguished it as a leader and innovator in the state. Its work demonstrates that the needs of Missouri's workforce and small businesses can be met through creative approaches to program delivery and strategic partnerships. Dr. Patillo's efforts have helped deliver vital, rapid response information to businesses and communities. She is motivated by bringing people together to coordinate high-priority commitments and identify projects that will grow Missouri's workforce. Her determination, perception, and courage enable her to embrace new technologies, to gain insight from her experiences, and even to risk failure. Because, in her view, the work is more important. Dr. Patillo shares her knowledge and serves as a mentor to colleagues, other team members, and partner organizations to advance their response to the demand for online programming. Dr. Patillo's collaborative approach has united colleagues and creative partners to share best practices and highlight Missouri's strengths in workforce and economic development. Her commitment to partnerships provides measurable impacts and positive contributions to the business community in the state. These partnerships include the U.S. Department of Labor, the Missouri Economic Development Corporation, Chambers of Commerce, and numerous economic developers. Dr. Amy Patillo's ability to engage workforce development professionals has dramatically accelerated the distribution of information and the sharing of best practices and serves as a model of effective collaboration. Congratulations, Amy. We're really proud of you and I know of the great work you do because I interact with you and you send me emails constantly updating me. But uh, tremendous work and like all of our award winners yesterday, I can't say how proud I am not only of you but all of our great stars in extension that certainly have represented us well over the past year.